This tutorial is for Caitlin Hunter's Gloam Cardigan. It's a fabulous pattern available on Ravelry. You'll need DK weight yarn. I'm using this Julie Aslan yarn. Two size knitting needles. One for the bulk of the sweater and then one size smaller for ribbing. You'll also need a very long cable for the collar ribbing and a very short cable for the sleeves. You'll of course need scissors, stitch markers, and a stitch holder is very handy. But if you don't have one, a scrap of yarn will be just fine. Also a crochet hook and a darning needle. Okay, let's talk about getting gauge. Really important. The pattern calls for 19 stitches and 29 rows to equal a four inch square. So here is my first square that I knit with a size up from the recommended needles because I'm normally a bit of a tight knitter. You can see that this is still short of four inches and if I used this needle, my sweater would be too small. So here I went up another needle size and this is what I came up with, almost perfect four inches. So I'm happy with this and now I know the right size needle to cast on with. I'm using the long tail cast on method and have followed the instructions for the left back shoulder. The one thing you might need a little refresher on is the cast on two stitches. You simply knit into the stitch as normal, don't take it off, and just twist it back onto the left needle. Knit into the stitch, pull it through, twist it back onto the left hand needle. Now I've cast on two stitches and I'm ready to either just knit on down my row or purl on down my row, depending on if I'm on the left shoulder or the right. Next, I'm going to join the shoulders. You can see here that I have my left shoulder on the stitch holder and I finished my right shoulder. I've done the first part of the join the shoulder, which is purl down the wrong side row. I'm just now finishing that purl. And now I'm going to cast on the number of stitches that the pattern calls for, which will become the middle back of my sweater. So I'm going to do this the same way I did before, which is knit into the stitch, pull it through, twist it back on to the left hand needle, knit into the stitch, pull it through, twist it back on to the left hand needle, knit in, pull it through, put it back on the left hand needle. So continue doing this every once in a while counting to make sure you have the right number of stitches. And then when you get the correct number of stitches on your needle, you're ready to join the left back shoulder to your work. So I have this on my stitch holder. I'm going to just purl right off of my stitch holder. If you don't have yours set up to do this, you can just put your stitches onto your left hand needle and then continue from there. So I'm just going to join this by purling right into this first stitch and then purling on down the left shoulder. I'm not going to go all the way to the end because this is where we start some shoulder shaping in doing our wrap and turns where we make some short rows. So I'm just going to purl on down until I get to the number of stitches left that the pattern calls for. Now I'm going to slip these back onto my left hand needle. Yours might already be there. And now I'm ready to do my first wrap and turn stitch. I'm going to show you a couple of these right now, and then I'm going to switch to some thick yarn so you can see a little better what's going on. So to do a wrap and turn, I slip the stitch, bring my yarn between my needles to the back, slip the stitch back and bring my yarn to the front. I've wrapped that stitch. And now I'm going to do the turn, wrap and turn. So now I've turned my work over, my yarn is in the back, 
I've wrapped the stitch and I'm ready to just knit on down my row. I've completed a short row. Short row because I didn't go all the way to the end, so it wasn't a complete row. Now I'm going to knit across those cast on stitches, the middle of the back of my sweater, and keep on knitting down until I'm ready to make my next wrap and turn. This is on the knit side, which is slightly different. So I slipped my stitch, I put my yarn in the front, now I've put it in the back, I've wrapped my stitch. Don't worry, we're gonna go over this a few more times. Now I'm turning my work and I'm ready to purl on down the row. This is a good place to take a quick count, make sure you have the number of stitches the pattern calls for, and if you're off by one or two, it's not a crime to just add an extra stitch in where you need it. Okay, so now, before we go on with the sweater, I'm going to go over wrap and turns with this chunky yarn so you can better see what's going on. If you want more info on wrap and turns, you can watch my wrap and turn tutorial. If you want less, you can fast forward until the chunky yarn disappears. I'm going to demo first with the chunky yarn and then with the sweater yarn. Here is the wrap and turn from the knit side. So I'm at the place where I want to do my wrap and turn. I'm slipping my stitch, bringing my yarn to the front, and slipping my stitch back, bringing my yarn to the back. I've wrapped the stitch. And now I just need to do the turn section. Now I've turned the work, my yarn is in the front, my stitch is wrapped, and I'm ready to just purl on down the row. Now I'm at the place where I'm gonna do the wrap and turn from the purl side. So I'm going to slip the stitch, bring my yarn to the back, slip the stitch back, bring my yarn to the front. I've wrapped the stitch, my yarn's in the front, I'm going to turn my work, my yarn is now in the back, my stitch is wrapped, and I'm ready to just continue knitting on down the next row. So now you can see what this has done, I've shaped my work by adding more stitches in the middle. And now all I have left to do is pick up the wraps. So to do this on the knit side, I just knit to the wrapped stitch. Here it's pretty obvious. I pick up that wrap and knit it together with the stitch that it's wrapped around. This is easier on the knit side. So now I just keep on going until I get to my next wrapped stitch. Here I pick up my wrap and knit it together with my knit stitch. Now you can see that this is really nearly invisible. It looks very nice on the right hand side. On the back, it's a little messier. You can see those picked up stitches do like a double bump. Here you can see the wraps on my stitches. It's a little trickier to identify what's what on the purl side. So, it's a good idea to identify your wrapped stitches on the right side, note kind of where they're gonna fall, and then mark that spot and flip it over to the purl side. Now I can see where my first wrap stitch occurs and I can put a marker on it. So this way I know as I'm on this purl side and I'm ready to pick up my purl stitches, I can just purl on down this part until I get to that marker. You can see here, that stitch looks a little funky. If I didn't know that I wasn't at my wrap stitches yet, I might think I needed to pick up that extra bump, but it really is just the back side of the picked up stitch from the knit side. Here's another funky one. 
So I'm just gonna purl that as normal until I get to my first wrap stitch that I have the marker on. Now, here I am at my first wrap stitch on the purl side. I'm taking my marker off and I'm going to do this a little different. I'm picking up the wrap from the back and putting it onto my needle and then I'm going to purl these two stitches together off of the needle. It's just easier to do it this way when you're on the purl side of the work. There you can see the wrap is a little bit messy on the back, but it'll get absorbed into your knitting and it's the back. So here I am again at another wrap stitch. I pick it up from the back, put it on my needle, and purl these two stitches together. And that's wrap and turns. You can see that it's shaped the work. I've got some extra rows in here, which is giving me a little bit of a bump. Here it is on our regular sweater knitting, a bunch of extra rows. It's a little more subtle. You can't quite see the bump in this yarn. Now back to our previously scheduled tutorial. Now we're gonna do the wrap and turn on the purl side here. So I slip the stitch, bring the yarn to the back, slip my stitch back, and bring the yarn to the front. I've wrapped my stitch. Now I turn my work over, my yarn's in the back, and I'm ready to knit on down my row. So now I've knit down to the place where I want to make my wrap and turn a couple of stitches before my last wrap and turn. I'm going to slip the stitch, bring the yarn to the front, slip the stitch back, bring the yarn to the back. I've wrapped that stitch. I'm turning my work. Here you can see now I've lost where my yarn is supposed to be, but that's okay because I can read my knitting. I can see that I've half wrapped this stitch and I'm bringing the yarn back to the front where I know it should be, wrapping the stitch all the way, yarn in the front because I'm getting ready to purl on down this next row. Now I have completed my wrap and turns and I'm ready to pick up the wraps. I'm first gonna demonstrate this on the purl side. I simply purl until I reach a wrap and turn you can see here's one with the wrap around the stitch. I pick that wrap up from the back and put it on my needle and then purl these two stitches together. It's a little trickier from the purl side. So I'm gonna demonstrate this a few more times. Here I am at another wrap and turn. I pick the wrap up from the back, put it on the needle next to the stitch it was wrapping, and purl those two stitches together. You can see this does leave a little bit of a messy wrap, but it's on the back and it ends up getting absorbed by your knitting. Pick the wrap up by the back, put it onto your needle, and purl the two stitches together. Super easy. Now it's even easier on the knit side. You simply pick up the wrap and knit it together with the stitch that it was wrapping. It's a little bit easier on the knit side and so it's really not necessary to slip that wrap onto your needle. You just simply slip into the wrap and knit it together with the stitch it was wrapped around. Now you can see what this has done for our work. We have some little spaces where we only have a few rows knit, and then we have the places where we have a lot of shaping and a lot more rows, since we did a lot of short rows here in the middle and didn't knit all the way to the end. Okay, on to the chart. I suggest starting this in the morning with coffee or at the time of your best concentration. This is not late night Netflix knitting, at least not for me. There's nothing really complicated here, 
just different combinations of knits and pearls to make this really nice textured pattern. It took me a minute to wrap my head around a chart written for a flat piece of knitting and it felt to me a bit like a memory exercise and a brain teaser combined. I kept thinking, this is great, I'm holding off dementia. The end product was definitely worth it and once I got into it, it became much easier. I'm going to share my tips for thinking through. Some might resonate with you as helpful, some might seem like Mr. Obvious comments. I hope at least some are helpful and please share your thoughts and tips in the comments section. Okay, so first we're gonna be looking at this mocked up chart. I didn't wanna give away Caitlin's pattern, so I just made up a chart that has similar characteristics and we can talk about them as we go through. First, a few basic tips for chart reading. You start reading a chart in the bottom right hand corner and then you go right to left, left to right, kind of snaking your way up the pattern. And this makes a lot of sense because that's exactly what's happening with your knitting. So all of the right hand numbers here are odd, which means you're starting the right side there and all of the left hand numbers are even which is when you're doing the wrong side. So this makes it interesting to read. When you're on the right side, it reads normally. Spaces are knits, dots are pearls. But when you're on the wrong side, the spaces are the actual pearls that you're doing. And this is because you're completely looking at this as if it's from the right side. So when you're looking at the right side, if you purled it on the wrong side, it looks like a knit or a space on the right side. Here you can see we're on a right side, so we've got three knits and two purls. Now on the wrong side, it's purl, knit, knit, purl, purl. You just read the opposite of what you see there because what you're seeing in the chart is from the right side. Here's another little tip. The first column and the last column of your work are always going to be stockinette so knit on the right side and purl on the wrong side also you can see here this red box these red lines that are going through the pattern those red lines are showing the repeat section that's inside of it so all of these stitches inside of this red box are what you're continuously repeating all the way across your pattern for example, here's a pearl, pearl, knit, 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 repeat. Pearl, pearl, knit, knit, knit. You just keep doing this over and over. Pearl, pearl, knit, knit, knit. And when you get to the end, you hope you finished up a pearl, pearl, knit, knit, knit sequence and you have two stitches left. If you have one stitch left or if you have three stitches left or four stitches left, you know you got off track somewhere and then you have to go back and find out where you got off track. If you get to the end of the sequence and you have two stitches left and you can do your knit knit to end your row, you do a little mental happy dance and feel very accomplished. If you do get off track, it's really helpful to be able to undo your knitting to before you made the mistake and then carry on correctly from there. This is called tinking. Tink is knit spelled backwards. And it's not that hard to do once you get the hang of it. And as a consolation prize, if you do have to do it, at least you can feel like you're exercising your brain, similar to brushing your teeth with your opposite hand. So I suggest you just relax into it and enjoy it. It's part of the process, at least for me. Another tip I have is to check off your rows as you go along. Just really important to track where you are as you're going along and maybe put a dash on the other side just to avoid confusion and help you easily see where you are in the sequence. Another thing that's really helpful is to be able to read your knitting to not only memorize the sequence that you're doing, like here I'm doing two knits and then three purls, but also know where it's going to fall according to the row that you're knitting on top of. So here, for example, I know that I start my two knits right in between 
these two knits. So there's one of the knits I purled over and now I'm going to start my two knit piece right on top of that second knit. So they just kind of are staggered with the two knits that I'm looking at and that will help keep me on track. Here's an easy break of a row. It's an odd row, so you read it the opposite. It's all pearls, so that's super easy peasy. You just have to purl across the entire row. And here you have an entire row of knits. Here's the combination that I found a little bit tricky. It's knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. So it's a series of five, and you don't have any tells below you to help you read your knitting because below me here is an all knit row. So I just have to remember my knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, which is a little bit tricky to remember because you can get in the automatic habit of just doing knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, and forget that it really is a series of five. But when I switch this over, the next row on this kind of a pattern here is the exact same. It's going to look the same from the front. I'm actually doing the opposite. So that means I have an easy row now where I just get to knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches. Here's a combination of sequences that I enjoyed where you have a knit on top of a purl and a purl on top of a knit. This makes it super easy to read your knitting and remember what you're doing as you go along. So there I had purl, knit, purl, knit. So I'm going to knit, purl, knit, purl. And I can remember what I'm doing or I can just look at my knitting. Here I have a purl, so I'm going to knit it. Here I have a knit, so I'm going to purl it. And a purl, so I'm going to knit it. Just keep doing the opposite. I hope you found these tips helpful and I'm sure you'll come up with a ton of your own tips just to keep your brain occupied and make the chart fun. Once you've completed all of the chart work, you'll just do all of the stockinette and the ribbing and then you'll end up with three panels of stockinette and the chart work that make up the two front panels of your cardigan and the back of your cardigan. Next, you're going to seam these together at the shoulders. So this is using a technique, really the kitchenier stitch, and you just have to use your darning needle and some thread, secure the yarn into the corner there, and then come across and put it into the opposite corner, leaving yourself a nice long tail that you can weave in and then we're just going to keep going back and forth, picking up the two legs of the V on each side, just after what was our cast on row. So now I come in here, I pick up the two legs of this V, and then go across to the back and pick up the two legs of this V. Just keep doing that back and forth all the way across dip in here for the two legs of that V, across to the back, dip in there for the two legs of that V, grab a V on the front. Now I can just give it a tug and tighten it up there. I can see that I've made a seam. I can squish it around a bit, pull it out just to make sure I have nice tension and you can see what the seam on the back looks like. So you're just going to continue doing this all the way across, pulling your seam together every couple inches. Now here I'm on my last few stitches that I'm going to pull together. Just keep doing the same thing, dip in, grab both legs of the V until you get to the very end, then you'll just weave in your end and you're going to do the exact same thing for the other shoulder seam. You can see here it made a nice seam and you can see what it looks like on the inside. You do have a ridge on the inside. 
and our sweater is starting to come together. The next thing that you're going to do is make the hole for the sleeve. So just kind of line it up there from the shoulder seam on down and you want to measure the space for your armhole according to the pattern directions for your size and then I thought it was helpful to kind of just put a little locking marker right there and now I know that's the part I'm reserving for my sleeve and now I'm going to seam together the rest of the sweater for the side seam just kind of make sure it's all going to line up nice take out my marker and do something very similar to what I was doing for the shoulder seam just pull these rows apart secure your yarn into the one side by pulling it through and back through leaving yourself a nice tail and now I'm going to go over to the other side trying to keep it lined up nice pull apart the last row and the next row and grab these two bars that show up in between the two rows make sure you don't pull your tail through and this is what we're going to do all the way down kind of pull this row apart a little find those two bars and scoop them up with your needle across to the other side in where your yarn came out and scoop up the two bars keep going back and forth scooping up the two bars making a little zigzag all the way across scoop up the two bars go over to the other side in where your yarn came out scoop up the two bars and now you can see the seam kind of loose there hold on to your tail so you don't lose it and zip it together you can play around with it a little make sure the tension is great and just keep on keeping on all the way down scooping up those two bars on one side going over to the other side scooping up the two bars over there and zipping it up which is kind of fun to see how it comes together so nice there see the ridge that's left on the other side And you're going to do this all the way down to the end, leaving that little split in the ribbing. Okay, after you've seamed up your sides, you've got your sleeve holes here and you need to pick up the stitches. I find these shorty needles really helpful. I love, love, love them. They allow me to pick up my stitches without using double pointed needles or the magic loop method. And you can, of course, just buy a singular set of short needles. So the first thing you do is you dip in at the very corner of your sleeve, wrap your yarn around the needle, and pull it through. Now you've cast on one stitch, picked up one stitch. Now you're going to drop your tail and pick up your working yarn, wrap it around the needle, and pull it through. You've picked up two stitches. You're going to keep doing this picking up maybe three out of every four. You should just know the total number of stitches that you're picking up all the way around the sweater and then maybe divide that in four and kind of eyeball a quarter of the way around your sleeve, making sure that you're evenly spacing out those stitches. If you want more information on picking up stitches, you can check out my technique tutorial on picking up stitches for stockinette piece of work. So now we've picked up all of the stitches all the way around the sleeve and we're ready to just knit, knit, knit for the stockinette piece of the sleeve. 
here you can see we finished the sleeve and the other one exactly the same nice bit of stockinette followed by the ribbing and our sweater is coming along next we're going to do the same thing along the edges of the sweater for the ribbing collar so at the very bottom of my sweater I'm going to start picking up stitches and for this you need a really long cable on your needle you're going to be picking up a lot of stitches here you're doing it exactly the same as you did the sleeve stitches just dip in right between those two rows dip into that hole pick up kind of three out of every four really just trying to evenly space the stitches you're just dipping into that hole wrapping the yarn around your needle and pulling it through dip in wrap around pull it through I think it's helpful especially when we're picking up so many stitches to go ahead and place markers a little bit along the way kind of dividing out maybe a quarter of the way maybe even more maybe an eighth of the way and then I just calculate out how many stitches I need to pick up in order to get to that marker and that helps me stay on track and keep my stitches evenly spaced out every once in a while count make sure that you're on track it really is a lot of stitches to pick up so here I am at the very end picking up the last stitches all the way down to the other corner at the bottom of my sweater now I've picked up all the stitches all the way around and I'm ready to flip it over and start my ribbing so now I'm just going to do the ribbing which starts with two purls and then two knits two purls and then two knits and you might notice I'm now using different needles because the ones I was originally using to pick up the stitches weren't long enough here you can see my ribbing I've knit I think it might have been a little oh, let's see yeah like two and a quarter inches and that would be perfectly fine but I decided I wanted to really make this ribbing nice and lush and long for a shawl collar so I think I ended up making them close to seven inches long and then when I got to the end I decided to use the Haya Haya bind off it is my favorite bind off for ribbing a nice super stretchy bind off if you want more information on it you can check out my Haya Haya bind off tutorial but it's really quite easy you're simply going to knit all the purl stitches and purl all the knit stitches and then do your bind off when your yarn is in the front like this you bind off from the back so I have a knit stitch I'm going to purl it bind off from the back because my yarn is in the front a little clumsy here okay now I need to do a knit stitch because I have a purl there so I'm going to slip my stitch back put my yarn in the back to get it in the right position for a knit stitch so now I knit the purl and bind off from the front since my yarn is in the back knit the purl stitch bind off from the front since my yarn is in the back now I have a knit stitch which I need to purl so I slip that stitch back put my yarn in the front so that I'm in position to do my purl stitch purl the knit and then bind off from the back since my yarn is in the front same thing purl the knit stitch 
and you can see this makes a really nice bind off. It's nice and squishy, nice and stretchy, has a really nice shape to it. I love this bind off. Now I did not do this here and you can see it's still a nice stretchy bind off. I bound off in pattern, which is great, but look how nice the Haya Haya bind off looks compared to just the regular in pattern bind off. I'm much happier with it. So here is my Gloam cardigan. There's my Shaw collar. That was a little bit of an adjustment. And you can see the sleeves with the ribbing, the really nice chart work, such a nice texture. I love this pattern. Hope you enjoy it too. Here's the finished product modeled at my local yarn store. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you enjoy your Gloam cardigan. It's a great pattern by Caitlin Hunter from Boylan Networks.